Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure and the privilege to be with you uh, today, this afternoon. Uh, let me start with some introductory remarks. It is obvious that in this era of the Green Deal within the European Union, the climate law, the fit for 55 and of course the net zero, which is our common objective in the context of the upcoming COP26 to take place in Glasgow in November, uh, our objective is to combat climate change. And it is very clear that environmental degradation, the climate crisis, public health, and the quality of our lives are interconnected. This is a chain where all the links of this chain need uh, to be safe, as it has been proven that the climate crisis and environmental degradation can lead to the proliferation of viruses, can boost, unfortunately, uh, the pandemics through air pollution, uh, PM 2.5 and PM 10, and of course, through wastewater, because uh, the virus has been identified in, uh, in wastewater. And in this context, Medical waste, I would call them infectious waste, because the corona waste are infectious waste. And here we are talking about the most, let's say, obvious ones, namely masks and gloves, when it comes to people uh, that have been contaminated. Uh, we have also all the devices used for the tests uh, in the medical laboratories where People have to be tested, those at least uh, who have not been vaccinated in Greece on a daily basis. And this is becoming even more and more uh, strict, rapid tests, but also uh, PCR. So all these devices, and of course, uh, most importantly, all the devices used at the hospitals uh, to support uh, the patients uh, which are clearly infectious uh, waste. Uh, there, there is no need for evidence because if you wear a mask and you are not contaminated, uh, this is a simple waste. It's not an infectious waste. What is extremely important uh, is, and this is a new phenomenon that uh, has appeared, that we treat this waste stream, the corona waste stream, as a separate stream. We all know now that... Uh, in the circular economy, waste directives, waste, a big, be it uh, household, domestic, or dangerous waste, has have to be treated separately. We need separate collection, separate streams, not to mix uh, waste, and of course to be able uh, to recycle them. Because, for example, this uh, uh, plastic bottle can be recycled, and in the future. Uh, uh, in 2024, new uh, PET and the polypropylene bottles will have to use uh, up to 25% recycled plastic. So when it comes to this, it is extremely important that in the new bottle which will use recycled plastic, no contaminated plastic uh, has been, uh, let's say, used. And in that respect, it is extremely important to treat dangerous waste as medical waste and infectious waste in our category is a special category that needs to be treated separately and should not be mixed with uh, household waste. Therefore, ideally, there should be uh, special bins. There are special streams at the hospitals uh, to treat separately uh, medical and contaminated waste. And of course, in some hospitals, we have also nuclear waste uh, because of uh, the special machinery used. And these have uh, uh, to be treated uh, in a specific way. Now, to come to, to, come to your question, uh, our Prime Minister and, of course, Greece uh, has been uh, a pioneer uh, in the campaign that uh, we have launched, not only to protect the climate of uh, our planet and the, our prime minister has undertaken both at the level of the United Nations. He has spoken recently 
at the UN General Assembly and also at the level of uh, the European Union. Recently, uh, uh, we had uh, the meeting of the heads of state of the nine Mediterranean countries in Athens where a, a very important declaration has been adopted focusing on the importance of the protection of our climate, of the marine environment of the Mediterranean, and of course of the biodiversity as the biodiversity uh, is, uh, is very precious for the uh, equilibrium and of our, of our planet. Uh, therefore, as regards uh, the uh, combating uh, COVID, uh, uh, not only uh, the efforts and the campaign that was undertaken in Greece was extremely uh, successful and we were among the first uh, to provide the vaccines, to uh, inform the public opinion that this is an extremely important issue. Now we are at the level of the average within the EU because there is still some resistance, but this is not a Greek phenomenon. Uh, I think uh, the population needs to understand that uh, this is something very important and not to have a reactive attitude vis-a-vis -vis something on which they are pushed sometimes uh, to be to be vaccinated, you know, sometimes overdoing uh, can be counterproductive. I don't believe it is the case because the campaign was uh, thoughtfully, let's say, prepared. But I think that with, other, with the other measures that uh, will be taken uh, now for uh, those who have been vaccinated to have access to restaurants, to public places, uh, this will be an additional encouragement uh, for them uh, to, to be vaccinated. As regards the waste management, uh, we have now adopted uh, the law which uh, transposes in Greece, and this is my last comment, uh, the uh, waste uh, directives under the circular economy uh, action plan of the European Union. We are adopting uh, an action plan in Greece. Uh, the Greek law is now pioneering in terms of uh, uh, ensuring separate collection of waste on properly managing uh, uh, dangerous waste, uh, and of course, on raising awareness as waste management and waste in general uh, can lead to contaminations of uh, uh, the, the environment, of land, of soil, of uh, waters, etc. And they have to be treated uh, very, very cautiously. And my last remark is that waste under the circular economy should not be treated as waste anymore. These are, at the end of their lives, secondary products or raw materials that can be introduced in the circular economy and lead to new products that uh, can be produced. Thank you for Thank your you. attention. Thank you so much.